So over the past year, I've been doing fasts every Friday, a minimum of 24 hours, sometimes 36, just depending on how I feel. I've done a few multi-day fasts, three days, water only. But for over a year now, I have fasted pretty much every Friday. And in that time, there is one thing I can guarantee. It should not be called a fast. It should be called a slow. <laughs> It's so nice to see you again. I've missed you. No, really. If you're here for one of my reaction videos, this ain't it. Seriously, this is not going to be a reaction video. This is not going to be something. I mean, if you want to stick around, you can. But if you're here to see like a normal video reaction video, wherever it is, just go ahead. You're not going to enjoy this at all. So first things first. Ooh, uh, why am I looking at the microphone? I, I don't need to look at So for the past year, I've kind of been taking a handle on my health. That's, that's, that's fair. Making videos especially daily videos where you're reacting, you're shooting, and you're editing, and you're uploading, and making sure the copyright strikes and all that good jazz, it takes a lot of time. And so I had to refocus on my health, which took a good portion of my day, my morning at least, and so that kind of meant that my reaction videos had to get pushed aside for a while. In that time, I've been running, I've been biking, I've been, there's a commercial, there's a commercial on a blue screen. Why? Why YouTube? It says 24 hours of blue screen, and then they throw in my time of taking my health back, I've been running, I've been biking, I've been trying to eat well. Currently, I'm on a vegetarian diet because I gave up animal proteins for Lent. It's been a long, long Lent. And in that time, I discovered fasting. And so should you. But what about Bill's eating habits? Into his mouth went some egg. Right away, a big bite of toast. And there was some bacon, so he stuffed in part of that. And then, just one big splash of milk. And Bill was off to school. Well, he caught up with his family, and he beat them through breakfast. But he ate so fast. Now, of course, I should preface this by saying, preface this? Of course, I should preface this by saying, please consult your physician, not me. Do not come back to me and say, well, you know, I don't know why my wife's in a diabetic coma. That guy on YouTube said it was all right for her to fast. No, please don't. Make sure you're healthy enough to do a fast first. But I highly encourage fasting. It's great for your immune system. You feel wonderful when it's done. But I'm not here to be the guy that tells you the benefits of fasting. There are tons of videos on YouTube about the benefits of fasting, and they can speak more eloquently than I ever could about it. I might even link a few below. What I'm here to talk about today is some of the things that they, you can't find any YouTube videos for in concerns to fasting is what to expect, not when you're expecting, what to expect when you're fasting. There are, there's literally no information on what it's like to fast. Let me fill you in. But first, Please, I beg of you, before you attempt any fast, you need to at least take one month of your life and quit sugar. After school, of course, Bill was hungry. He was hungry and he had some money. So, but did Bill leave his pop and candy only half eaten? No, sir. He emptied that pop bottle as fast as he could. He gobbled down all his candy. And, as if that wasn't enough, he ate some cookies, too. Then Bill didn't feel hungry anymore. No, sir. For once, he had eaten too much. You need to cut out all refined sugars from your diet. Anything that comes in a package, read it. It has added sugar into it. That also includes fruits. Now, you don't want to give up fruits forever, but you need to give up fruits at least until you get through your sugar withdrawals. And they're going to hit you. Hit you hard. That also includes soda, sweet tea. Most of the drinks you drink that come in a bottle, they have added sugar into it. You've got to cut it all out. You've got to make a very concerted effort to eliminate sugar from your diet. I'm telling you this because it's going to make your day that you decide to fast so much easier. I don't care if it's Coke Zero. I don't care if it's, a, it's a, oh, it's Diet Coke. It doesn't have any calories in it. you got to give up the soda. you got to give up sweet tea. Once you've given up sugar for an extended period of time, I promise you, you're going to find out that tea has flavor beyond sugar. And trust me, I grew up with, with grandparents that made sweet tea so thick it was like pudding. You put a spoon in it and it didn't move. It had that much sugar in it. And I loved it. It was amazing sweet tea. But it was so full of sugar. And I'm wondering, why are they all diabetic? Well, here you go. Once you've quit on your sugar for good, you're going to find out that things that you would normally add a ton of sugar to have an immense amount of flavor on their own. If you do not 
give up your sugar addiction and yes you do have a sugar addiction it's been ingrained in us since birth if you do not give up all refined sugars in your diet then i promise you if you attempt to fast you're gonna fail you're gonna fail hard and miserably i'm telling you this because i love you it's the truth you're you're not gonna make it there will be sugar withdrawals that you need to go ahead and get yourself through before you decide to deny yourself any type of nutrients during the day that sugar craving is going to hit you and it's going to hit you hard and you're going to end up going to the cabinet and then before you know it you're going to tell everyone you you intermittent fasted and since i mentioned it intermittent fasting for anyone who is a, a professional faster are they professional faster for anyone who does fasting on the rag intermittent fasting you're not fasting you just you just skip breakfast. What I personally consider, and I don't give a crap what the definition of intermittent fasting is, what I personally consider an intermittent fast is 24 hours, just one day without eating. To me, that's an intermittent fast because your body's not really going into the starvation mode that it needs in order to have the benefits of fasting. So technically to me, every Friday, I'm really doing an intermittent fast because sometimes I might actually cave and, and have a dinner. It's officially a 24 hour. There's another ad. So it's officially a 24 hour fast that I do. But I don't know where I was going with that now, with these freaking ads. So what I do is eat a sensible dinner, and that's sensible. Regular portions. You don't need to overeat. That's a common mistake people make when they've decided to fast, is that they feel like they have to go to Golden Corral and eat a giant buffet of food to get you through however long it is you're going to be without food. It's, it's defeating the entire purpose. Don't do it. Just eat regularly. If you can skip dinner on Thursday, great. That's just extending the time that your body goes through a starvation mode. And starvation is not a negative word. It's just a, your body going into survival mode, kind of shutting down the processes that goes on. And then you reawake them when you break the fast and reap the benefits of all of that. And trust me, it's, it's genuinely like turning it off and turning it back on again. So for me, for me, for me, I actually do a Thursday regular day, eat a sensible dinner, go to bed, wake up Friday morning. Now, I will have coffee and we'll discuss that a little bit later because there is a minimal amount of calories in just straight black coffee. But you, you, if you've become accustomed like I have to having that caffeine kick first thing in the morning and you decide to do without it because you want to do a true fast, you're, you're going to have the dumb all day. So I have my coffee in the morning, wakes the brain up, and then just go about your day. Well, Bill, plenty of time to get to school today. And in class, studying seems easier. What? 11 o'clock? Usually you're mighty hungry by this time. Today. Today, you feel fine. Whatever day is good for you. I pick Fridays because it's an easy day for me to, if I'm doing something, to not think about having to eat during that day. And then I get to enjoy the weekend as well by breaking the fast prior to the weekend. And then don't ruin it on the weekends. Be sensible. Don't, don't sit there and say, well, I didn't eat yesterday, so I need to eat an entire side of beef. Don't. It's unnecessary. And you'll find out. It's uh, also drastic. Bill didn't know it, but he was already beginning to be sick. So what to expect while you're fasting? Number one, dry mouth. Why? You, you tell yourself when you're gonna fast, I'll just drink water all day and that way I'll have something on my stomach and that way. The water doesn't help with the dry mouth. You're sitting there chewing all day long and it's just, you have this incredibly dry mouth and you get tired of drinking just water. It doesn't fill you up. It doesn't make you feel like you've got anything. And if you do more than 24 hours and your body goes into a legit starvation mode, it's not requiring water, so you're not thirsty at all. So you kind of find yourself not drinking as much water as you probably should when you're fasting. It's just, it, I don't know why, you just, you just forget to do it. Number two, bad breath you can actually taste. In this age of having to wear masks, especially, because I did this, I would fast every Friday and having to mask in public or mask while I was at work, you get to enjoy your own brand all day long and trust me it's not good your body just starts kind of leaching all this bad stuff out and it comes up through your esophagus and it's just you hate talking to somebody because you know you're giving them death breath but you're the one you can actually taste your bad breath it's like, mwah, mwah, and then the dry mouth doesn't help number three muscle aches what yeah if you do especially if you do a multi-day fast or you just start beginning into fasting the first few you do, they, they really are gonna suck. But your body has all these free radicals and all this bad bacteria and all this stuff going on in your gut that actually, when you deny yourself food, leeches out of your system. And the first thing you think of is, well, I'm fasting, so I, I can't, I need to relax. I need to not do as much. I'm just gonna sit around and meditate or watch TV or read a book. 
and then all of this stuff goes out into your body and it settles where you're settled, which is your lower back, your legs. Oh my God, the Jimmy legs you get. Now you may not get this just in a 24 hour fast, but if you attempt more than a 24 hour fast, you're gonna have muscle aches and joint aches. It's just part of the territory. The more you do, the less aches you have. So if you end up fasting multiple times, not once a week or, you know, if I do it once a week, 24 hours, but if you say like maybe once a season, I'm gonna do a three day fast, just see how it goes. Expect the pain. No four, headaches. Yeah, if you do a true fast and you don't drink that coffee in the morning and your body's used to having that caffeine, you're gonna get a headache. You're also not drinking as much water as you probably should, and that's gonna give you a headache. Don't ask me why. I don't get them anymore, but when I first started fasting, it's, it was a whole day of just grumpy grumpiness. Muscle aches, dry mouth, bad breath, headaches. Why is anybody doing this? So to eliminate those headaches, if you normally drink coffee first thing in the morning, don't go get the soy latte chai, blah, 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 with extra foam and no, just black coffee. Get that caffeine kick. No soda, no tea that has sugar in it. If you're gonna do tea, make sure it's just like a plain Earl Grey or an herbal tea. That's fine if you need that caffeine kick. It's gonna help you a lot with those headaches, I promise you. No soda. Later on, drink lots of water. Number five. Heightened sense of smell. I promise you, you can smell what your neighbors are cooking through the wall. And especially if they like to make gravy and they start that roux and you got the flour smell and the, the grease and the, the meat and, the, and everything that's coming through. Oh my word. I was actually driving down the road one day. We had the windows down and I could smell someone grilling in their backyard. I knew what kind of meat it was. It was a New York strip because it had that tinny smell to it. And it was on charcoal. Number six. Every... Thing on social media, television, you might as well read a book. Go somewhere where the temptation is little, turn off the television, turn off the social media, because every other advertisement that comes up is melty, delicious, steamy food. And you're gonna cave, you're gonna cave, because it, it looks wonderful. Cheeseburgers, steak, fries, every single food item that comes around, you wanna eat it. You wanna eat it right then and there. Number seven. Time itself slows to an absolute crawl. Why in the world they call it a fast? There is nothing fast about that day. If you spend your life and you sat there and said, where did the year go by? Oh man, I can't believe it's already Friday. Jeez, it's already June. No, you wanna slow time down fast because that is the longest 24 hours, 48 hours, the longest amount of time you will ever have to endure is not eating to start with. It gets better, I promise. Number eight. When those free radicals get loose in your body and you haven't eaten and for some reason your body is relying on itself for nutrition, you get the jimmy legs at night. Oh man, if there's some means that you can use that doesn't have any type of caloric intake, I don't suggest taking pills on an empty stomach ever, but if there's something, an herbal tea that you can take that's gonna help you sleep better because trying to fall asleep and trying to stay asleep and your legs are trying to jog an entire marathon all night long, you cannot find your zone. Number nine. Speaking of nighttime, the dreams. Oh my word, Mitch Hedberg was right. You're building a go-kart with your ex-landlord. What is with the dreams on fasting? It's like fever dreams almost. They're not nightmares, they're not lucid, they're just odd. You wake up and say, what in the f Now I've done so many fasts, I actually look forward to them now because I'm kind of excited to see what my brain is gonna come up with when there's no food on my body. Number 10, breaking the fast. Don't leave home be someplace safe, I promise you. I'm going to try and put this as delicately as I can so that there's no gross out moments, but when you break the fast, they tell you to break it slowly, break the fast gently, grapes, watermelon. If you've given up sugar, you can start out with something. You know, they, they recommend grapes and watermelon if you've given up water, but if you've been drinking water, I would recommend something very light, very soft, and then just wait, just wait. Don't go shopping, don't go to work, don't. You need to be at home base in a safe place because it is violent. What do they mean by that? What is it violent? You're gonna poo. You're gonna poo so explosively you might actually lift yourself off the toilet. Now you're asking yourself, why in the world would I subject myself to that? Why would I go a whole day without eating or, or several days without eating only to have this giant explosion coming out of my rectum? It's only one time and it's your body literally waking itself back up again. You're turning off the computer and turning it back on. And in that way, all the junk that was in there is getting expelled. It's one time, I promise you it's one time. If it's more than one time, then, then you got a problem. 
I beg of you, don't make any plans. Make sure you're in a safe spot. Break it slowly. My biggest problem is breaking it slowly and then not, it, it's like the dam bursting. You let a little bit of water out and then the whole dam bursts and you go and you eat a ton of stuff. It's a, it's one of my, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a big issue. I gotta work on it. Me personally, I've yet to find a way to break the fast that is gentle enough to where I could, you know, go about my day. So pick a day to do your fast when you know you can get through it, but also make sure that the next day you're not away from a bathroom because you're gonna need it. And if you're comfortable pooping in public, I'm not, then knock yourself out. But trust me, if you're anything like me, you need to be safe and secure at home. But lastly, what I wanna talk about with fasting is the best thing to expect is health. It's gonna get you healthy. Play. Hard play. Plenty of pep now. Yesterday's stomach ache is forgotten. And this is the one thing, this is that uh, that green fairy that everybody chases. This is that, that, that runner's high that everyone's looking for. When fasting, especially if you do a multi-day fast, try at least once in your life a three-day water-only fast. The, the day after the third day when you break the fast, it's a normal breaking the fast. It's no different. It's not escalated by the amount of time that you fast. 24 hours, it's usually fairly gentle. But if you do two days, three days, breaking the fast, it's, it's going to be rough. The following morning, when you wake up, I promise you, you are never going to feel better in your life. You're going to have a positive outlook on life. You're going to actually like people. What? The sky is bluer. The sun is brighter. You enjoy its warmth. Music has a different feel to it. It's, it's a different type of natural high that you get when your body finally just kind of reawakens and everything's working the way it should because you've given it healthy food and it's reset itself. And it just, I, I tell you, you got to try it. It feels wonderful. It makes you want to do it more except for the fact that the three days while you're fasting really suck. And that's, that's one thing that we're all missing in life right now is actually feeling good about yourself, about other people. It, it's, it's worth it. So please, if you're here and you've made it this far, obviously you're curious about fasting. Look at other videos about the benefits of fasting. You're gonna talk yourself into it, but I just wanted to make sure you know what you're in for. If you know it in advance, it's not so bad. It really isn't. It's just, you know, we've all done worse all of us. So thank you to the tens and twelves of you who have, you know, stopped by and hung out with me and are anticip anticipating new videos. Are anticipating new videos. I've kind of gotten the editing bug here lately, so maybe there'll be some more reactions coming soon. They say that, you know, everybody talks about when you're working out, I don't have time to work out or I don't have time to run or I don't have time to do this. And, and the biggest proponents of exercising like me are say, well, you, you make time to do that. And I need to make time to be with you a little more. You and me. I'm going to make some more time for you. Make some time for me. Click that button. At supper time, you're hungry again. Everything tastes good, and you're eating well. See what good eating habits can do for you? Eating for seconds. After supper, you feel fine. No stomach ache, not too tired, not hungry, just feeling fine. And that's...